What is good? We're back. We got the old school Seahawks cap from the Big D. Yeah. How's it going? Bringing it, bringing it back, brother. Bringing it back. Yeah, I think I think they should go permanently into those jerseys. Just cut my fingernails. Jason can't pop a beer anymore. There it is. <laughs> Needed a fresh crack. I haven't heard one in a minute. Fresh crack. We're back. Bunch of bitch asses over here. Dry recording. <laughs> Well, I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm only, I'm only having a couple beverages uh, <laughs> this month. Not, not going dry, but just, just a few here and there. Get rid know? of it. What are we doing? We went, I went hard in the paint from November to December. So, um, anyhow, so today it's we're not gonna... a quitting podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Big D, how you doing, hombre? Good. Oh, I'm doing good, man. Lots of changes. Lots of, uh, you know, new life with the new year. We get uh, we got all kinds of stuff going on there in the NFL. But uh, I'm, I'm excited about today's topic. So this, yeah. is, uh, this is the time to start thinking about these things. So I'm, I'm excited for it. Did your boy Pete, Peter Carroll run out of gum or what happened there? Yeah, I mean, Pete Carroll held the headlines for about six hours and then Saban and you know, Belichick yeah. decided to. Yeah, <laughs> and that was like, it. That, was, that was the Did he get fired? Or did he step step down? He's on a, yeah. as an advisory role. I feel like they just they they nicely let down all those guys. Basically, I mean, Saban was like, "Fuck this, I'm out." But yeah, um, Saban, I think was uh, fine to be out. Belichick, I think, knew he was he wanted to be out, and I think Pete wanted to come back. Yeah. Um, I mean, if you look at his comments leading up until mm-hmm. when they said he wasn't, it was he was. You know, I'll be back for 2024. I'm yeah, juiced. he's all I'm ready. geeked I'm... up on Adderall, though, so you never know. The adrenaline's <laughs> running at the end of those games. Mm-hmm. Send him over to Carolina. That. Let the Panthers deal with him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's what I say. All right, well, we're going to tackle some early off-season buy lows. We got, I don't know, 18? I don't know. Whatever number you want. Fire them up. Like, we got a lot. Let's keep track. Yeah. Let's keep it track. How many we got? All right. Well, off the top, I'm going to go with six, I think. I don't know. Maybe seven. Uh, whatever. Off the we'll top, see. I want to run through a couple of players uh, that are a little bit more expensive, but we've maybe talked about them early, since last off season or earlier in, in the actual season. So I'm going to throw us a couple of quick hitters out there. We got Drake London mm-hmm. uh, and Pittman dating back to last off season, and they still seem to be buys. Um, yep. You know that they their their value in the drafts that we've been doing haven't seemed to to go up super high. Pittman had a pretty good, pretty strong season, and, and Drake wasn't terrible. But we're hoping that we're going to see some some movement there. So we could see a, an uptick in all Falcons. You know, if Bijan's low, buy Bijan. If Pitts is low, yeah. I'm fine with buying Pitts. Some people will say absolutely not, but hey, maybe if the next guy comes in, stops trying to run his routes as a wide receiver and actually uses the mismatch as a tight end. Uh, Glory be what could possibly happen there. Um, so, you know, but I think there could be a spike in Falcons once if, if a Ben Johnson or a new regime signs there and, and then they maybe even get a, a different quarterback. So could be now a chance to maybe swoop in there when it, it hasn't spiked. But maybe maybe the cat's already out of the bag. Um, another two Waddle Olave. We talked about them in season uh, so far in mocks. Uh, there's been a pretty good value on Waddle. And Olave, both have seemed to fallen almost around, um, mm-hmm. a round, since, eleven inches around. <laughs> yeah, uh, since since last um, off season when our ADP kind of stopped, and we're we're starting to build that back up here. But we've done a, a few mocks over the last couple of months, um, and Waddle and Olave uh, seem to be pretty good value. Like I said, we talked about them in season. So th- those are just some quick throw-ins. I can't even count those in the number if you don't. Whatever. <laughs> Dude, the, sh- the longer the list, the shorter le- the explanation. I think that's right what we're, we're, we're going for here, right, kids? And let us know. Would you like us to expand? There's been a few people who are like, you just breeze right through that guy? And I'm like, hallelujah, man. I can't tell you how much I appreciate this comment. Yeah. But- On the next note, <laughs> um, I'm going to go JSN a buy here. Um, and we're, mm-hmm. we're going to kind of work from maybe a little bit more expensive. I got a couple of different. I can go through what kind of all the positions. I don't want to leave anybody out. Got some more expensive, and then we're going to you know, kind of scroll down to some cheaper. We're going first one off the rip is JSN. You know, I think some people, if you don't, if you don't get the production right away, uh, analytical people will tell you, you know, with guys who haven't broken out, here's the list of them. And in, in, in round one receivers, it's Jamison Williams, it's Quentin Johnston, it's uh, Traylon Burks, it's 
Nikhil Harry. So, you know, an ugly list of guys. And it's like, well, there's some context around JSN. I, I don't think I, once he went to the Seahawks, I don't think you were expecting a huge breakout, you know, from, you know, the jump. Then he gets a wrist injury. Had some good chunks in the season. Could have, I think, had some more explosive plays. Had a couple of touchdowns that he dropped. Uh, and just watching him play, uh, I thought you saw him mature, get better, and be more uh, impactful in his role kind of as the season went on. Still saw some good targets through you know a decent chunk of the season. Um, but I, like I said, I, I think you saw him grow and get better as the season. What, what, what's the resident Seahawk fan? Uh, I think JSN a, a, a buy for you? It feels like could be you know a little bit of people who are worried about their coveted everybody's best receiver from last year not not being awesome what do you think big d yeah i mean uh you know i think the there's there's a quite a few pieces there um jsn we've talked about before early in the season he had the wrist injury he was a rookie p carroll was kind of notorious for bringing rookies along a little bit slower make sure they're fully in the game including run blocking all that kind of stuff and and i think you laid it out perfectly i mean i think as the season went along you saw him put in more and more positions for you know third down catches for you know moving the chains for getting out in the middle we on this show when we were evaluating last year we're talking about you know jsn is one of those players where we think this year isn't going to be quite as you know, hot is next year. And, and it kind of, you know, seems like it's playing right into that fruition. So I think that's how could it have been, you know, what did you guys expect from a man? Well, that's, you know, I think that's just the thing that, you you know, you think you're going to go in there and he's going to explode. And it's like, well, you have Tyler Lockett, which is perennially hated on. He's getting older. The hairline keeps getting further and further back. Uh, But, you know, he keeps, he keeps going out there and still getting behind defense and doing his thing. And Mm -hmm. DK, I thought DK actually also down the stretch, was was playing a whole lot better and looking a whole lot more uh, like the guy you want to see week in week out from from DK. Uh, but still needs to mature though. Uh, you know, I think I think these are all growing pains. I don't know how if he'll completely get to the the guy that you maybe want. <laughs> At one point, you said he needs to pass him back. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you know, I don't know exactly what the long term plan is with Lockett. But Pete Carroll is now out of there. I, I don't know if Geno Smith will will necessarily be back with the Seahawks or not. Um, you know, you're going to get a whole new regime. Maybe you're going to go attack this a little bit more offensively. Pete is more of a defensive guy um, who is, is going to kind of play a little bit more conservatively, not turn his quarterback loose per se. And then if the fourth quarter, if he needs you, it seems like he'll kind of say, all right, hey, hey, go go get this for us. And, and we're going to throw it around the yard. Is that is that would that um, be your kind of takeaway with this, how the Seahawks do things a little bit? Yeah, exactly. It's pretty conservative on offense, but you take your shots and and you win the ball through running and defense. That's that's how it's been. But like you you stated, I mean, it's the things are changing. So any of those any of those positions where you have players open, those are those are going to be great by lows because like you talked about Atlanta, the whole scheme is going to change there. Um, it has to be better. We we you know we've, we've kind of seen I think the floor for <laughs> most of those players. And yeah. and then the same thing with Seattle. I mean, Seattle's been. You know, Russ has had his moments when uh, Russell Wilson was here, and then Gino. You know, last couple of years have definitely had some striking moments, but they they weren't really known as a uh, an elite, proficient offense, and that could change. I mean, the, it could be a completely different coaching staff. But even if it isn't, even if we, uh, you know, even if Seattle brings in a new defensive player, JSN is just he's he's too talented. He's in the right spot. He's in the right system, and um, I know DK gets a lot of the attention but i think as um second year boost um wide receiver he, he's going to be you know he's going to be right in there i think to 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 have a pretty big jump next year so yeah and this is to me this is quintessential by low people worried there's going to be some analytical people who come out there and and because of some thresholds that maybe he didn't meet and and some Threshold. other comparing him to some other of the, of the first round picks that didn't didn't really maybe go far. I think there are some analytical pieces that tell you that JSN is going to be good, but I think you can get caught up in some of the other pieces that, that may not. So I think there could be a little bit of a battle of whether or not JSN is 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 that guy or not. Um, and, and and to me, from all the evaluation I did and what I watched uh, take place throughout the year with him and the context. Um, you know, wasn't really expecting it. And, and this is the kind of guy that I want to swoop in. And if I can get, you know, I'm not going to pay crazy prices for him, but if I can go in and swoop in and, and get him, that being said, you know, just about anybody in this draft, you know, outside of, you know, once we get into the Keon Coleman area of this draft in 2024, I'd be willing to trade, uh, you know, those picks for, for JSN, I think. 
um, as far as, you know, first rounders coming in this year, when we get to the key on Coleman, um, you know, Egbuka, we just lost, we just lost him. He's going back to, uh, to school. We're not a hundred percent sure on all the, the, the declarations. We're going to get him here really soon, but that'd be kind of my, you know, I, I would take, I'd probably take Rome over JSN, but then once we get further, a little bit further down the wide receiver, uh, realm of I'm talking picks to give you an idea of where I'd be on him of just a straight up coming into this year. I think for now I'd, I'd, I'd probably position JSN probably right behind Rome. Um, yeah, so that'd probably be about in super flex about 107, 108, um, somewhere in there. Does that sound about right? Yeah. 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 All right. Well, I'll go, I'll go Hollywood Brown as my next one. Big, big Hollywood guy, mm-hmm. you know, how many times can this guy be on your buy low list? Obviously, you know, felt not not a whole lot. I mean, he just was just generally on a buy list for me. You know, all off season, I was I was into him. We saw last year that through his healthy spurt, he was you know spurt. in the top five of wide receivers uh, as far as PPR goes. You know, and then you know kind of kind of fell off a little bit. Kyler got hurt, yada yada yada, and then he came back and and was playing with a backup quarterback. And and the Cardinals were the Cardinals. Well, the Cardinals came back and the Cardinals were the Cardinals again. Hollywood had a pretty good start. He was wide receiver 20 through weeks one through 18. So a top 24 wide receiver playing with Dobbs and whoever else. They do switch QBs. He He's battling through an injury. He's getting out there to play. Um, and he wasn't super effective in that period. Although there were a few weeks where Kyler and him could have had a bigger performance and they missed on a couple connections. And then he finally goes on IR. What we've seen is we know that there's a high ceiling. Uh, we know there's potential for that. Is he a number one? I don't think so. Whether he stays with the Cardinals and his boy Kyler and they pair him up with another wide receiver, I think that would be great. Or maybe he goes on to uh, greener pastures and goes somewhere else and tries to get the bag, but, you know, join, joins another wide receiver. You know, the only place that I maybe wouldn't be super stoked would be like a Carolina picking up Marquise Brown. But, you know, if let's say Atlanta went out and spent on a second, get, got another wide receiver in there and, and paired him up with Drake, I think that would be pretty solid. So Hollywood Brown for me on the uh, on the buy list. He was dipping down into the into the ninth round on some of these mocks that we've been doing. To me that that says, "Hey, we're we're two, three rounds down from where we were." I don't think the players changed. I just think it was a bad bad end of the year with with some injuries and and in a not super great situation. Um, now you could point to the injuries and say, "Hey, I'm out." That's fine, understandable. Uh, but for me, uh, like the player, I'm gonna I'm gonna buy the dip uh, with Hollywood Brown here. Yeah, I think there's two pieces there. Like one, he came into a system that was different when he uh, agreed to sign on with Arizona. They changed coaching, coaching staffs, and then he had the injuries. and And he's performed with Lamar, and he and he's shown that he can perform with Kyler. Kyler. So I'm with you. I think that if he goes somewhere where he's not required to be the one all one A, you know, he he's definitely gonna be a. a instantly I, I think in the top 18 potential right away and i don't think that i don't think anyone's asking for a first for hollywood i i i i'm uh, value wise i i would think that that it's got to take more than be, two though right they're probably two twos maybe a you know maybe a positional player um switch out or something like that but i mean unless it's a late first like i i don't you know a 108 106 mid first um i i i think that's too much um and i i don't think the person who's been holding him would even want you know or i mean they would want that but i don't think that they would expect that so you know maybe if i have like one one at the end of the draft i have 112 111 you know or 201 and and you know a 2025 20, second or something that that kind of sounds like the price point for me he's he's kind of in that wandell robinson um you know um deontay johnson kind of kind of bucket where um i think hollywood and deontay definitely have had better performances but all three of them have had some injuries and some some just changes in general and and feel like they're all kind of in that 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 realm where they can pop and and get right back into close to the end of uh, wide receiver you know wide receiver 12 wide receiver 13 overall um fairly easy so hollywood brown or rashi rice i mean i'll take rashi at, at you know yeah, straight up on a dynasty team, I think you're going to take Rashid. Josh Downs? I'll take Hollywood. I'll take Hollywood. Stephon Diggs? Uh, probably still Diggs, but it's getting closer. Mm-hmm. All right, let's keep it moving. We got Hollywood Brown. My next two, I'm going to switch over to the tight ends here. Uh, I'm going to go Cole Komet and Joku. Going to give you a a, a, a a double threat guy, a two-for-one <laughs> two package. Uh, with Looks and personality. <laughs> a little liar, liar. uh drop there yeah go check um, it out so yeah it's a dvd spoiler 
the last few mocks these guys have been dropping to around the eighth round, and we're, we're talking tight end premium here. Um, Cole Komet was scoring as many points as DK Metcalf in tight end premium almost all season long. Now, maybe a little bit of a down season for DK. Just 1.5 um, tight end? 1.5, yeah. Wow. Um, uh, but then he had a zero week 17, and but was still only, you know, was still within striking distance of scoring as many points as DK Metcalf. Um, and then, you know, you had Joku, who would have basically been wide receiver 14 on the year with... 1.5 tight end premium with a pretty slow start through the first five games. I think he only had double digits one time in there and then it ended with 241 uh, points to end the year in tight end premium. So I think both of those guys are emerging. Cole Komet's a little younger. I think he's still only 24, 25. So maybe I might default to him, but we know in the tight end world, AJ, nothing but a number, baby. As they get older, you know, older the berry, the sweet of the juice. Yeah, that's definitely the phrase. <laughs> it's black of the berry, the sweet of the juice. <laughs> Um, yeah, so Joku, Komet, I think, I think are buys right now. I bought Komet going into the playoffs in 1.5 premium. Um, you know, and, and I think he's, I don't, I don't know that everybody's quite caught up to those guys being in the, uh, upper echelon of, of tight ends. And, and for Cole Komet, I mean, worst case scenario is Fields is back and he just had a really good season with Fields and they've bolstered everything up around him. Uh, or however you want to look at it, worst or best case scenario. The other one is Caleb Williams is your quarterback. Um, and it's, yeah. it's, you know, hopefully history in the making for the bears finally getting that, that magical quarterback ride. So, uh, Getsy is out, uh, weird that they keep Eber uh, so we'll see what, what happens with the Eber with the, uh, flutes. with flutes. Uh, it'll be weird. It, it'll be interesting to see, uh, who, who comes in there as the OC, um, Kind of a weird scenario there to keep fire those guys and keep your HC, um, especially when it seems like he's kind of on on potential shaky ground uh, to begin with. So I think both of those guys are uh, high level buys. Um, if I get two twos for those guys, I'd be I'd be in all day long. Um, oh, yeah. one, one two is I, I don't think it's going to get it done. Um, but uh -uh. you know, you get into those eighth round picks just to give you a, a starting price point. That's that's kind of where I'd be at. If with, you're in with a startup, mm -hmm. you might be able to trade next year's two to hop in there and grab one of them, maybe. But probably not. I mean, they scored so many points. You, you got to yeah. pay more than that. Well, I mean, but like I said, I don't think people have really caught up to you know. You're still getting really good value on those guys, and that was kind of the the crux of my um, rationale for throwing them on here. Of you know, I think I think they could be trickling up as the season goes on. As the off season goes on, when when people kind of, hey, Cole Komet is twenty four and is putting up you know tight end one, so, very solid tight end one numbers, and I don't think a situation is either going to change or get any worse. I don't think it, it, you know, uh, and, and Joku has been great with Fla Flacco. Just looks like a whole different guy out there. Looks like the guy that you were hoping for. Um, and then you know, again, Watson should come back and and you know be in control of of a decent offense over there in, in Cleveland. So. Um, just want to hit a different position for you. I think Joku and, and Komet are, are solid buys here. So Big D, why don't you take us away with, with a guy or two? Yeah, I just, just real quick on Njoku. I think mm -hmm. it's, you know, he, he just had a tremendous season. And I like you said, I know that they've had some quarterback carousel there in, in Cleveland, but he, he was playing pretty well with Watson too. So I, I definitely like that pick. At the beginning of this last year, I, I traded uh, Jordan Love for Njoku in a two-point premium. Njoku ended with 365 points. Jordan Love ended with 397. And that was on the back of um, Jordan Love had some pretty great performances Is down, that down the one QB. That's a super flex, um, but two point tight end premium with everybody holding on their tight ends like you wouldn't believe. So, so uh, paying, I paid extra for Njoku um, and it kind of worked out, right? It's uh, point wise, it was, it was right in there. And I, I had a plethora of, of quarterbacks to begin with. Um, we won't talk about it, but they all got injured. So anyway, point being is, is Njoku is, is a great buy. I, I, I think in the tight end realm, I would, um, I would try to buy Isaiah likely in the off season, maybe not quite yet, but when Mark Andrews comes back, I think he's a, uh, he's a, he's a great buy low candidate. He, he's, you can see that he's been performing. I think he's going to get a bigger role as, as it goes forward. But once Mark Andrews is healthy and all the talk is about Mark Andrews again, it's going to cool off. And I think Isaiah likely is a, is a great um, target um, save, you know, in an, in a month from now, maybe a month and a half from now or around draft time, uh, NFL draft time is, 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 a is, is a target that I think that, um, I'll, I'll be trying to, 
trying to capitalize on. So big D. Yes, sir. <laughs> Dude, I swear I said that on the one of the end of the shows I was on like a little while back. I was like, I, like the same thing. I was like, when Mark Andrews comes back and people remember him, I don't know if he's going to make it back in the playoffs or if he's like done done for the year. I don't know if they designate him a return, but like, man, if he could just, as soon as he comes back and back in people's minds, likely his value is going to go down. Also, I think people are down on Mark Andrews. Like, like go buy him too. But like, yeah. they're both yeah, fantastic. That's, in, that's that's a very good point. Yeah, Mark a Andrews fucking is stud. Well. I love that 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 call for mm-hmm. sure. Wait, wait a minute. Wait, not right now. Don't don't buy him after he explodes. No. He's been exploding. <laughs> well, been unfortunately, exploding. you're going to get uh, you know obviously not this week, but you're going to get at least one week where all eyes are on Ravens right, right. Uh, yeah. in the playoffs here, which is always devastating or great for a player's value. Uh, but yeah, I like it. Love it. Yeah, he's been great. And then the going back to the wide receivers for a moment, you know, my dude that I just love is uh, Christian Kirk. He uh, over there in Jacksonville, mm-hmm. he was injured. Um, so I think he can get a good discount on him right now. But if you saw that offense, you know, Trevor Lawrence struggled. Well, he struggled mostly when Christian Kirk was out of that offense. Um, I know Calvin Ridley's leaving. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Evan Ingram's going to be around, yeah. but Christian Kirk is his, his, uh, his binky, his, uh, his blanket, like, mm-hmm. he, you know, and you can tell and, and they paid him. They, he's still on that contract that, he, that we all were like, what the, what the flip are they thinking? But, um, you know, they had to pay, pay people to get there. And, and I think Christian Kirk's earned that money and he, and he continues to, to be low in drafts and low in, in, in your fantasy community, but he just is a, is a, a strong, solid performer that I think you could get away given a second, a contender second potentially to the right owner and you, you might be able to capitalize on yeah you know some some high level talent next year so yeah on that on that same team that i said i traded for Komet was kind of because i lost christian kirk um and in trying to trade christian kirk i couldn't there, there was no value on him in in trying to trade him so i was like well i don't really want to trade him necessarily but if i could have got good value on him to somebody who's out of the playoffs i would make a move and, and get you know a, a comparable player but couldn't get any value on him so i think that really stands on you know uh, send a two out see if see see where how much the person has him comes back with you know more you know if it's just completely off the table with a two or if he just sends a, a little bit more and now you know you got something on the hook right yeah yeah so i like that a lot um real quick uh says mark andrews might make a return in the playoffs so mm. there you go there <laughs> There you go. Yeah, Mine no, he's been, just, no, he's been pro- projected. So if he yeah. comes back and has a pretty big game, then not, then you know, a couple weeks later, that might be a a likely scenario that you mm. can go out and get likely. So there you go. And then on the running back side, yeah. um, the dude that I still am on and and is high in my rankings, and and everybody keeps moving him down is uh, Montgomery. I mean, David Montgomery for the Lions. Uh, he's he just continues to produce, but he's he's got the the all important goal line work, you know, he's the touchdown machine there. He, he had some injuries this year. He kind of, kind of backed off a little bit, but I mean, he's, you know, I, I, I just, I, I'm not, I'm, I'm dumbfounded by the people that state that he isn't in their, you know, top 10 running backs, top, top, I would say top 10. Let me look at my rankings, but, but uh, I, I probably about top 10, top 12, running backs i mean you know from a points perspective it's not a sexy name but if you just put a stat line up there and then you look at what jamal williams did when jamal was there before he went to new orleans it's the same role that role isn't changing now ben johnson may be gone the offense might change a little bit but for the most part it seems like they've got something working there with gibbs and there's enough you know there's enough uh, to go around because Montgomery is, is capitalizing on those touchdowns and, and i don't really see that offense changing too much and so for me you know, uh, if you went out and tried to buy Gibbs, I think it's what two first, probably at three, maybe three first. I, yeah, it's going to be really hard to buy Gibbs. Up, it's extremely expensive. Yeah, but if you go out and try to buy Montgomery right now, it's not. It's it's half that, if if maybe even less than half. And points wise, they're, you know, to end the season um, in a PPR, you know. Gibbs had uh, about 16 points a game and Montgomery was at uh, almost 13 points a game, 12, 12 and a half points a game. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you're, you know, you're talking about a four point differential, but you're talking about a price point that's extremely, you know, a lot less. So if you're, you're needing an RB2 on your team, I mean, that's, that's, that's the dude I'm looking at right now is uh, I think, I think price wise and, and for what you're going to get your bang for your buck, if you will, like it, it's, it's right there, I think. Yeah. Um, and, and again, his roles aren't changing. So 
Yeah, I th- I think you hit it right on the head at the end. There is is I just I don't the bang for your buck of what Montgomery can do for you week in week out is fantastic. Um, it's underrated, underappreciated, and and the emergence of then, you know, there was probably a stretch where Montgomery was averaging more points than that. Um, that then twelve, he was putting up some really good numbers, um, but you know. I do worry a little bit about Ben Johnson kind of moving on and, and how that rotation will work. But Gibbs isn't a guy that I don't think you want to grind a game out with necessarily. And that's been Monty's role as you've been watching Gibbs role expand a little bit. Montgomery will get uh, in there and, and grind, grind out some drives for you um, and still be very, very productive, different, completely different player. Compl- and then, you know, they complement each other so well when the speed is so different and, and how they play is so different uh, that, you know, you're just getting two totally different um, offense is attacking you with with two different stylistic running backs. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think Monty's going to be a fantastic value all off season long. So uh, yeah, way, I mean, it's, keep it's the, fire the old burning. adage. Yeah, it's the old adage that Gibbs goes down, right? right? Boom! All of a sudden, you know, it's the same thing with uh, Zach Chardonnay. Uh, Chardonnay. Um, Char- Chardonnay. Uh, you know, he's 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 been you know slowly but surely trickling down, trickling down, trickling down. You do the 23 redrafts he's he's way down at the second now i mean i i I still think he's also a target that i'm going after because um even with the change of offense he's proven that he's he you know he was getting more and more of the ball uh kenny three sticks uh ken walker the the third was um you know he's a great running back and i definitely think he's the one a but uh who knows what the the new new line is going to go in so uh, i think sharps is probably around the price of Montgomery. I'd probably go Montgomery over Sharbs if I'm trying to add a running back. But I think that the the price point on Sharb has dropped enough where he should also be on your radar to buy low. Bang, a little little extra buy low right bon- there. I like it. Bonus. Bonus. All right. Well, I'm gonna run through a couple more real quick and then and then we'll get out of there if you don't if you don't have any more, Big D. Go for it. We'll go Jacoby Myers as we're working our way down the, the cheapness scale here. Wide receiver 26 through weeks 1 through 15 and missed a week in there. Um, you know, obviously the Raiders were just in a little bit of peril, of, uh, of turmoil, of, you know, Jimmy G, not Jimmy G. How are we playing? How are they playing? Jekyll and Hyde. And then, you know, at the end of the season, you put AOC in there and it's, you know, it's just a lot of, eh, uh, this is, he's, he's, um, you know, you're exploring your options here of what AOC can give you, but it wasn't the best thing for Jacoby Myers per se. He was still doing okay, especially in full point PPR was, was, you know, startable enough um, and was, and was seeing some targets and then he would have some blow up games. Uh, but, you know, I think he's just from before the last three years, you know, outside of this situation that ended up being with the Raiders uh, halfway through the season. He's just been so damn reliable and consistent. And and me and Big Co did a show last night, and Big Co didn't want anything to do with Jacoby Myers for a two. And I'm like, well, if you're giving me a late two and I I can get Jacoby Myers, I know this isn't the most sexy thing ever, but he is just a guy that I know I can consist, especially if we can just get a coach and a quarterback or or just a quarterback uh, Mm -hmm. that that can consistently be an an NFL quarterback, uh, you know, I just Jacoby Myers has just been the the picture of consistency over the last three years. Um, and if I'm in three wide receivers or a deep flex league, um, he's a guy that I know that I can start week in, week out, as long as there's somewhat proficient quarterback play and not it's a set it and forget it and not worry about it. Yeah, I mean, he's so much better than advertised. And like, what do you expect to get out of your late two i mean you know you, know? The, you can pull the you can say hey you know this this year on those late twos you were getting tank dell and you you know mate you may, josh downs might turn into something awesome you were getting uh you know in the early thirds you were getting puka so that looks awesome you know and i we're big proponents of that i, I i'm not saying i don't ever dump on those picks but uh, i think with a guy like this you know what you're getting it isn't sexy uh, and, and, you know, it might not be the most fun thing to do, but I feel like overall for your roster, if you're a competitor, I feel like it's just, it's very, very, if, you know, if I'm, if I'm a, if I'm a rebuilder or I'm, eh, you know, I'm not going to pick up Jacoby Myers, but if I've got a pretty strong team and I can add Jacoby for, for my, I just was the two eleven, and I can add Jacoby. Uh, yeah, let's go, you know? Yeah. I don't do know. Maybe, yeah. maybe that's too much for some people, but you know, just so consistent, man. 61 overall, you know? You need some he's of the sixty players on your he's team. He's the Robert Woods, right? He's the he's the Robert Woods of uh of, of this I don't know era. If he's that good. 
Yeah, I think uh, he could he, be that good. He is he that good. Right, yeah. I mean, when he has correct uh, uh, quarterback play, I mean, he's 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 a difference maker out there. He's he's more than just your standard like, um, you know, um, I don't know what. It, Tim Patrick or, you season. know, a player like that. Like he, he's, he's definitely in that wide receiver two uh, conversation when they have adequate quarterback play. So yeah, yeah he, but, he yeah. just cracked wide receiver two this past year and it was right. that bad. Like he's taking another step forward. Like he, he right. he's a legitimate. Well, he had, player. he was, it took a minute with the Patriots and then he wasn't scoring any touchdowns. And then the, the year, the last year at the Patriots, he started scoring more touchdowns and being a lot more, uh, was, was still getting the volume. And then this year he, he started off really good and he still had some blow up games. He, he I just think I think Jacoby Myers is just a really good, you know, battle tested guy who could get you, you know, a floor of 10 to 12. And if he's scoring touchdowns or going off, it's 20. And, you know, uh, yeah. And and players like that, you know, anytime we say late to um, even if we get into any players that are in the third, I, w- I would say that those are great players for add ons. Right. Like if right, you're paying right. premium, you're playing top dollar for for, you know, you're going to try to go buy CD lamb or or you know, Christian McCaffrey or, or, or somebody at the upper, upper, upper echelon, um, you know, the top 12 of their position, like those are the type of players that you want to add in there because they don't, you know, when you're talking about triple a players next to a player like that, it, the, the, the shines off of them. Right. And so yeah. you can get that late second, even maybe even like a third value in a trade with, with those type of players. So it's, yeah, it, yeah it's a great, great call out. Yeah. Um, I agree 100%. So, uh, another quick one here, Wandell, you, you kind of mentioned him as like a play style of Hollywood Brown, maybe not quite as much of a field stretcher as Hollywood Brown can be, uh, but can rack up the underneath catches and yak. And I mean, this is a guy who had a bad knee injury on 12, 13 last year. So watching some interviews with him and listening to him talk, he was like, you know, I, my doctors were saying, I'll start feeling back to myself about a year out from this injury, you know, and he played most of the year and, and got some decent targets. The giants have been shit and you know, they're going to go right back in and, and go back to rebuilding this receiving core. He, he certainly isn't a guy you want to be carrying your wide receiver core, but I don't think that's what the Giants were hoping that he would be. I think they were hoping they would be in a different position. If he can be your two, your slot, your guy you can move around, do some different things with, he's awesome when he's right. Uh, and yeah. he's had some big-time games, and he, he closed the season all right. Um, so, you know, I think next year you're going to go in. The Giants basically have Hyatt under contract, and they have Slayton, I believe, under contract, but they could get out of it. And then pretty much everybody else on the roster is, is, is not there besides, you know, maybe Darren Waller. Um, so, you know, they're probably going to bring in another big-time receiver. They kind of need to. Danny Dimes maybe runs it back. You, 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 bolt, you go back to the well with the offensive line. Uh, and see what you have. But Wandell, I think a really good flyer that, that's kind of forgotten right now because he didn't, one of those guys who was a second round pick and everybody liked him and, and didn't really break out and he was injured and, and there's some reasons, but he's he's had flashes. And those are the guys that once they start getting real cheap, I just want to go good throw in guy. Also, you know, hey, could I get a, could I, could I buy Wandell for a third right now? Is he, is he that cheap? You know, so throw some hooks in the, in the water. Uh, see if you, if you, uh, you know, can't come back with that. And then Wicks, Packers here, uh, you know, Cat might be a little bit out of the bag and rising, but basically you got a lot of really good Packers out there. You know, Jaden Reed probably getting harder and harder to buy. Uh, Christian Watson, you know, really good player, has maintained pretty solid value. Romeo Dobbs, good player, maybe maybe diving down a little bit with with the emergence of Wicks, but I don't know that everybody has quite caught on to the fact of how good, you know, Wicks had been um, in filling in duties for a lot of the banged up injuries, wide receiver core that they dealt with throughout the season. Um, really solid receiver out of Virginia here. Um, week 18th in yards per route run in week seven through 18 when he started to kind of get a little bit more usage. 2.11 in the yards per route run and then. 32nd in yak per route run with 4.9, which is still really, really good uh, for for a player like Wix who you weren't expecting anything from. So two two good metrics that that can be semi predictive, um, showing that Wix can play, and then the film also backs it up. Like really solid player. I don't know whose role he's going to take or how much of a role he will have. Is he going to take Romeo's spot? Can Chris, but Christian Watson hasn't stayed healthy. Jaden Reed's been great, but also battling through some stuff. So. Uh, you know, if, if you want to buy a piece of the Packers, he might be one of your cheaper options that that could really blossom um, and explode into, uh, you know, a great wide receiver, too. Uh, so, you know, I don't know what Wicks would cost, but I would throw out a third for Wicks without a problem uh, and see what kind of comes 
uh, back with him. A couple running backs to end. Kendra Miller, forgotten man, uh, had a great week 18. You put on the tape, it was great. He caught one pass. He had some really, really solid runs. You know, Alvin Kamara has a lot of money still on the contract, but I think they could potentially get out of it. It would cost him a lot. Uh, so I don't know that they would necessarily do that. I, ju- I think Kendra Miller just wasn't right a lot of the season, uh, was battling an injury from all off season and the ankle. A couple of times that you've got to see him, um, yeah, there's there's some rookie mistakes here and there, but when when he's going in, in this game, like y- y- you saw everything that you saw on tape uh, at TCU. He was, he was making guys miss. He was dead to rights a few times and juked a guy out, hit a hole. The speed, the burst, it was all there. He's got good hands. Um, he's just a guy who... I really liked, uh, you could call it take lock if you want, but week 18 was kind of like, all right, bang. Uh, we've got to see it a little bit. Uh, if he can get into the off season healthy, I, he's just, I don't want to say for sure. Cause nothing's for sure, but I, he's in my opinion, for sure. Better than Jamal Williams. What a dumb signing for the new Orleans saints who are just negative, like 90 million in cap. So they have to try to do something here. And Kendra Miller, um, you know, whether it's trading Alvin Kamara and getting out from that contract or trading Williams and maybe eat, I don't know how you would even trade Williams and who would really want him. But, um, I'm just, I want to put Kendra on my team. Maybe, maybe, you know, you're paying a second, maybe he's down to a third and I'd put him on my team and just stash him. You know, I'm not counting on Kendra. He's a guy that I want to stash. Uh, and you know, a lot of these guys, like you've been saying, are more throw-ins. But if I'm attaching a monetary value because I know what the comments are going to say, you know, well, what's it? So I always I'm trying to th- throw something out there. Um, and these are my value systems; they don't have to be yours. Uh, but I'm giving you the starting point of where I would be at uh, here. And one more running back to end the buy lows here: Jaleel McLaughlin, who looked really good in his time when used. I don't want to hate on Javante Williams too bad. Certainly didn't look awesome, but looked fine. But he was coming. He shouldn't even played most of the season. And he didn't yeah. get injured again. So I think Javante will have a pretty good role there. Uh, but McLaughlin, or McLaughlin, uh, rather, you know, was was very explosive uh, in the times that you got to see him. Doesn't need a whole lot. He was 15th in breakaway percentage, uh, 14th in explosive run rate, 5th in missed tackles per attempt, 4th in yards after contact per attempt. Um, and that was, those last three stats were a tweet from Derek Brown. Um, as I was skimming through stats for him, I typed it into the Twitter machine and Derek Brown had done some of the work for me. Um, so shout out to him also likes him as a buy, uh, fourth in yards per route run with a minimum of 20 targets, that data coming from fantasy pros data or, uh, fantasy points data rather, uh, great. They're, they're doing really, really solid work over there. If you don't have their, uh, data, uh, you know, that, that would be their one I would recommend for, for, for pro uh, data really 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 good stuff over there so uh, McLaughlin McLaughlin however you want to say it is uh, you know kind of I think by the end of the season was a little bit more of a forgotten man where people picked him up as a as a fourth rounder maybe somebody would still be okay with hey I gotta pick them as a fourth or an undrafted free agent maybe I can swap a fourth for him again and uh, and put him on the bottom of the of the roster because what I saw from him uh, super explosive player and you just never know with Sean Payton who he's going to pick to be his guys. Um, and, you know, I think Jaleel might have, you know, an early early track to uh, having a decent role for next year. Could be nothing. Uh, five, yeah, seven, I, I, seven, I, but. I agree with both those players, but Goughlin in particular, he, um, you know, he's, he's one of those players that you also listen in the media and he's showing up early, you know, coming in, you know, doing all the work that's on the the stuff that we don't see unless we watch hard knocks and and then we only see a portion of of stuff like that, but but he he was doing all that stuff and then he started having success. Um mm-hmm. and so he's definitely, you know, and and those type of players are the ones that I call the taxi rebuilders. If you're in a competitive league, competitive team, Oftentimes my taxi squads by the end of the year may be a little light because I've pulled people in because I'm competing, I'm trying to go. So these are players that you could reset with your taxi squad that are that are, you know, solid, especially if you don't have a ton of picks going in. Those those are type of add-ins. Um, there's one other player that I thought we would mention, and I just kind of want to get your take on it, maybe just to, to end the show. I know we're we're at the end here, but um Ramondre Stevenson was such a huge like buy during the off season. And then, you know, it just didn't work out quite for him, but the way that Zeke played at the end, I know the offense, I know the whole situation's changing there. And uh, I think he's on the last year of his deal. There's probably a dead cap is only 187,000. So I'm not sure if he'll even be on the team, but from a, 
from a potential standpoint and from a, if he is, or if he goes somewhere else, I, 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 I'm starting to really, you know, I, I wasn't necessarily on the buy train with him then, but yeah, man, I, I got to believe that the price is so low on him that he might be a stash right now to, to look at. This is the type of player that you could go during the fantasy play or during the NFL playoffs and, and, and look to add before he, uh, you know, before we get back around to the, to the new season. So what do you, what do you think about that? Well, I, I, I liked Ramondre coming into last season. Um, what wasn't quite what you wanted him to be, but there was a couple of points in the season where you were getting flashes of what you, or at least I hoped what Ramondre would be. Um, Patriots, not, not quite up to snuff on, on offense. They were, bad in the offensive line they had a offensive line injuries as well um you know Ramondre wasn't catching the ball like like he had been in the previous year you saw again a few bits and pieces of that and 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 some times where he really got going and then he got he got banged up and hurt and and shelved uh, but I think I think that's a good call I think once again it's it's fish go fishing and see what the guy who has Ramondre Stevenson um you know maybe he had him two years ago and wasn't a huge believer and then he kind of blew up and he's like I'll hang on to him and then didn't do anything for him you know you know everybody's in leagues with those guys who just get mad that it wasn't immediate performance and he didn't crush so I'm out now and I'm just on to somebody else um so you know much like Bill Belichick and on to Cincinnati let's see if we can you know buy a little cheaper Ramondre I would gladly pay you a two for Ramondre Stevenson I haven't been tracking him in the mocks and I don't have that information in front of me, but uh, definitely something to monitor moving forward. So anything else before we wrap up, Big D? No, I think we covered we covered quite a bit, oh, so um, you know, a l- little bit of all, all of positions. Um, yeah. If you're still listening to this, you know, if you, if there was a couple of players we missed that you think are your by lows, throw them in the comments. Let us know. And and uh, if you didn't agree with something, let us know that, you know, uh, if you do agree with something, let us know. Hey, let us know all the way around. Yeah. Uh, it almost sounded like let us know, which is, um, you know, that that time of season as well. But uh, lay tits you know, now. <laughs> we're we're here for you, and and uh, I think I think this is a good one, boys. Yeah, I, I I enjoyed it. I think it was a fun process to go through. We'll be doing plenty more shows just like this. Some of these guys will be on the list probably all off season long. We're gonna get mocks rolling. Um, see a lot of shit talking about the mocks that have been going on from from some of the comments and it's like man it, it is it is super early in the off season we are not controlling the mocks it's other people drafting these teams and with the rookies they're not even in there like so you have to know what's going on they're not even in sleeper yet so like a lot, i've seen some comments recently of how bad these mocks are it's like all right well come come join the mocks then like come come get in these things come on in it's like those mocks were taking place in november and early december and you know People hey, didn't know anything in. about You're the upset, rookies. Get it in. So. It's fine. Yeah. Oh, I'm I'm not upset about it. I'm get just it explaining to you, and it's a mock draft, so sometimes you let people slide and see where they go. So, you know, don't 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 be discouraged by watching one mock draft video and saying that this was the worst because you know eight other people drafted some guys that I didn't really agree with where they should have went. Uh, anyway, yeah. appreciate the time. We'll catch you on the next one. Peace. <laughs>